The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, everybody, about to start here. I hope everybody is ready for a great webinar. We are here in Amsterdam. Doing some last minute checks. And uh, looks like everything is ready to go here. And right now it's four o'clock here in Amsterdam. It's a lovely spring afternoon. Uh, welcome to uh, Layer in Travel and Tourism, a webinar that will last an hour. I'm Martin Lenz Fitzgerald, and uh, we're wondering what Layer can do for your business. Uh, together today with Olga Beza, the support engineer, I'll lead you through a great webinar, and I really hope you like it. I really appreciate that you uh, check in with us now and that you're listening and watching with us. So for today, we will do a presentation for 45 minutes. If you have any questions, uh, Olga is ready to answer them during the session while I'm presenting. Uh, please use the question box. Um, also, if there's issues with audio or the screen, please let us know. Um, uh, Olga will break in regularly uh, for me if there are lots of questions which are the same or if they can be answered right there and then she will do so. If you want this deck, uh, plus the recording of today's show, a demo that we have created for the travel uh, and tourism industry, as well as a white paper, tomorrow at layer.com slash tourism, you can download all of it. This is part of a webinar series, and um, regularly, regularly we now do webinars. For instance, tomorrow we will be back with our monthly Q&A. Be sure not to miss it, same time, same place. Uh, also, on the 5th of March, we will do a, a Get More Out of Interactive Print, where we will dive more in depth uh, into the best practices on how to create interactive print and create cool and effective campaigns. This is a paid-for campaign. On March 7th, we'll do an intro uh, into augmented reality and interactive print layer 101. This is a free webinar, so feel free to join that one. And also on the 12th of March, we're having a get started with layer uh, with the layer creator, which is a free premium online training for the uh, premium account users of the layer creator. Go to layer.com slash events if you want to know more. Today, I'll start with the history, then talk a little bit about layer uh, and what we do, some numbers. I have a load of examples, which I won't have time probably to go through all of them. Um, but later, you can when you get the deck, you can go through them in detail. I will talk you through the products as well, and after that, we end up with the questions and answers for the last 15 minutes. So with that, let's kick it off uh, on a short history of augmented reality. Ivan Sutherland in 1968 was the first guy who came up with the technology. He created this heads-up display, which you can see here with these cathode ray tubes. Uh, yeah, and really, uh, what he saw was actually a really rough cube in a graphics uh, format. But it worked for him, and wires kind of knew where he was looking at. Anyway, he was the guy who did it for the first time. The term itself, augmented reality, was coined in 1992 by Tom Codell and David Mitzel at Boeing. Boeing, of course, makes planes. And one of the things that they created augmented reality for is to make sure that the engineers could easily uh, braid the, the long wires that uh, go through the uh, plane to instead of looking on the right where you can see that red goes over green, for instance, they could see it projected over the reality that the red goes over green. And therefore, the margin of error will go lower, uh, will get lower, as well as uh, they will be able to work quicker. So 1992, the first time augmented reality as a term uh, was introduced. Most people, though, know augmented reality when in 1984, the Terminator movie was one of the first uh, mass audience movies, mass media movies that people saw where the Terminator looked around and could assess the threat level of the, the guy in the pool table as well as the girl who was serving him drinks. Uh, I hope you remember that amazing movie. So today, augmented reality really rides the waves of the smartphone growth. 
Today, we have 1.5 billion smartphone users out there. Still, we have 5 billion mobile phone users. So these are just general other types of mobile phones. So that's also what we can see uh, um, as the growth area for this market. And if you wonder how it works, it really starts with, for instance, a simple brochure uh, or any other type of visually rich surface, which has a call to action and which, of course, the system knows. Here you can see Layers uh, magazine. This is the second issue with a call to action. Scan this cover with Layer. When you do this, you hold your phone over it with the Layer app and you press or you select the screen. You just tap it once to scan. When it scans, the app analyzes the image it sees. You can see the little yellow crosses here. And all these unique visual features is what it recognizes or what it, what it kind of saves. And as a fingerprint, then sends up to the cloud database. So the database in the cloud where we have all the images uh, that we have in our database are registered there with a fingerprint. So a selection of the unique feature, visual features that it has. And when it has a match, the, the, the accompanying uh, digital media is then downloaded to your phone and placed on the image. As you can see here on the left now, you can see the, the like button, the tweet button, the buy now, and even the video. This is the augmented reality. The reality of this brochure cover now has been augmented, enriched with digital media, in this case videos, and a couple of buttons. Really straightforward, and this is also why this is working really well. So, repeating a little bit, it's re image recognition to recognize the visual, then augmented reality for the content and inter interactivity to engage the people. And you do not need special printing technology or special codes. It just works right off uh, the bat. When you have saved your PDF in your production run, you can send that to the printer and start enhancing the PDF using our layer creator, which I will show later. And one thing for the people that uh, knew, I know how about these QR codes, those black and bl uh, white square codes, well, this is basically the next level up. And this is much better because you do not have that ugly visual of the black and white square thing. It's rich media that you can do now with video, 3D on top of your magazine, your postcard, your business card, your, your poster even. Cool thing also is, is that it's dynamic. So after publishing it in augmented reality, every day, every hour, you can have a different piece of content on top of there. And of course, one of the things that you get with this is the wow effect. Really, it jumps off the page and into your screen and people always love it. We've seen this for almost five years now and it's amazing. So augmented reality and what Layer does is basically a, a part of a trend. And if you zoom out a li little bit, we call this the future of online is offline. So augmented reality, according to uh, Juniper, the research company, is a one billion market opportunity. And we're part of that. So like you just, like you just saw, it's a huge mobile platform that we're working with, 1.5 billion smartphones. And if you see what, what people do today, we really know that where they are using their location, what they do with, with social, like liking what they do also just by registering uh, through big data, the cloud. And now with augmented reality, we can really know what they see with image recognition and augmented reality. And this is part of this whole new trend where the digital world is seeping into the reality and the future of online is offline. And we're really excited to be part of that. For those of you who have Google Glass, Layer runs on it. We're doing some early betas on that. And yeah, it really, it really uh, is part of something big. So a little bit about Layer. Um, we have an amazing video, which I won't show because over the webinar, it's not really playable. But please, when you get the deck, play it and make sure you see it because it gives you a great overview. To uh, give you an, a sense of how many people use us, well, in the U.S., so that's just one of the countries we're used in, it's 10 million people that have downloaded the Layer application on their Android or iOS. We have 38 million people worldwide who use uh, our app or have downloaded our app on those platforms. And over 74,000 marketeers and publishers, educators, all kinds of professionals are using the Layer Creator to create augmented reality content on top of their marketing or other materials. Really, with this, it's, it's such an amazing number. It's, it's uh, yeah, it's really nice. If you look at, at it globally, uh, US is the largest market, of course, because it's the largest consumer market as well. But Germany trailing right back there, behind there with 8%, Spain, the Netherlands, the UK, Canada, 
those are our largest user groups um, there. And it keeps on growing. It keeps on growing. Overall, over 200 countries, we see usage of our app. And uh, we're really proud of that. We were founded almost uh, five years ago in 2009 here in Amsterdam. We we're backed by Intel Capital, uh, the largest VC in the world, as well as Prime Ventures, which is here in uh, Amsterdam, and Sunstone Capital, which is in Denmark. We're 30 people large. Uh, most people are in Amsterdam. You can see a little map uh, on the left there if you want to get a sense of where we are right now. And I can tell you, by the way, the sun is shining here, and uh, you almost don't need a jacket yet. Spring has started here. Uh, uh, we are also in New York on Varick Street, um, right near Soho, as well as in Toronto. So if you look at our layer customers, the largest customer group that we have are magazines. For instance, the last Men's Health or the last Porter Magazine by Netra Porte use us, uses us, as well as Ink Magazine, Parents, Baby, a whole list of large audiences see us regularly through these magazines. And we work, of course, with these magazines because of that reach. They really have a lot, of, a lot to gain. And through them, we work with a lot of uh, uh, publishers as well. You can see a list here on the right. Basically, all the big ones are using us. And like I said before, our 10 million downloads in the U.S. and 38 uh, worldwide, we are, with our companies, the largest augmented reality platform with those numbers in the world. We're also the easiest. You can make a page interactive with a layer creator in under a minute. And also our fixed price is pretty unique. For $60 per image or 45 euros, uh, it doesn't change no matter uh, how large your print run is or what your circulation is or how many times people use it or even how many videos or buttons or anything else you put on there, the price always remains the same. So really easy to work with and using your budgets. And if you think about it, what is now the core that Layer does for people, for companies? And well, what we do is we marry print to digital. We really strengthen your print marketing. We revolutionize by putting all these digital features on top of it. And you'll see some in the example list that we have in a moment. And not just the publishers, also printers use us, brands in general use us uh, on top of product packaging, for instance. Retailers use us uh, in their, their shop windows. Real estate agents use us, educators, we have lots of uh, amazing examples in that market. General marketeers in any, any form or shape, as well as travel agents. So if you want to augment your print, you yeah, that's when you use a layer. And what's nice is that this is a growing market. We saw in the, in the magazine market, for instance, a 246 increase of mobile activated print by the editorial team. And I'm over 50% growth of any type of mobile experience uh, in, uh, in the top U.S. magazines as well. So really, it's growing. Overall, if you see what kind of activation people use, image recognition, uh, under which uh, uh, category layer falls, is with 60% the largest uh, amount. A lot of people still use QR code. But uh, yeah, the most people, the most time or the most things that people do is image recognition and augmented reality over 60%. And if we look at our own numbers again, we see that once people scan over 87% of those people actually interact with the interactive print content. So this means that they are really engaged once they see it. So if you uh, compare this, for instance, with the web, this is uh, very impressive. So if you get people to scan, you will get so much more engagement on your prints than uh, those banners that you might also have. And the short of it is, if you want to use Layer, or why you want to use Layer, it's you want to amaze your audience. They will be amazed. They will see amazing stuff that you have, they have never seen before when they see that video. They will be engaged. So you can engage them. You can ask them questions, do simple polls, hot or not. Do you like this? Uh, and get them to your social websites. And with this, you strengthen your, your print marketing. And like I said before, you revolutionize it because you put the digital experience that they're used to on their screen, in their Facebook, that they do daily. You put that now in your print marketing. And of course, it, you can measure it. Everything in the digital world is measurable, just like augmented reality. So you can learn and iterate and grow. 
And with that, we've also seen from, from all our clients, our 74,000 users, that they really get an internal morale boost. For instance, salespeople that upsell augmented reality ads really feel that they have something extra to add and feel good about it. And also in general, it's an image upgrade for the brand in, in question that uses or the publisher that uses augmented reality in their business and their in their marketing. So if we look at the uh, travel and tourism world, on one hand, it's a growing market, yet also you need to deal with the change in consumer needs. One of the numbers we see is that, uh, for instance, in this year, 4.5% growth in the international um arrivals and yes i have a lot of storage you can see uh, <laughs> um and of course that throws me off but yeah so you see that a lot of uh, uh international arrivals so in general the market is growing also what we see is mobile the mobile medium is getting so important for the the, the people that do travel over 40 percent of online travel search comes from mobile millennials are twice as likely as non-millennials to use their mobile phone during travel and internet access in the hotel is one of the most important things people look for. So in short, audiences expect online levels of experiences in the offline world, social engagement, videos. And this is what augmented reality and layer brings. And this is why you can now do that on top of your print, on top of anything you use uh, that is scannable. So you can bring that interactive experience uh, out of that uh, uh, computer box and into the real world. And with that, let's start with some examples. And we have a lot. I really had to make a selection out of this. One of uh, the first ones I wanted to share is Pierre et Vacances. This is a, a large resort company in France. And uh, they have a large uh, uh, brochure they bring out every year where people can select which camp or which village uh, they want to go to. And they have a lot of video material available for, uh, about that. So each of their villages that you can choose from is enhanced with a video. You scan the page and then this video starts playing, which shows you the, the, uh, the village and you feel inspired by it. And with that, you can, yeah, it helps you make a choice about where you want to go. Another one, really a different type. This is the Danish Lake District. Uh, you see two pages here uh, from, from their contents. This is a brochure that they do. And on the one hand, you can see uh, the woman there with the church tower and the layer call to action where a personal welcome is given by this note or a lo local uh, important person. And on the right, even more important, you can see in video when you scan it, you can see that, hey, you can go pike fishing and how that feels. A really nice local movie that shares or shows you how it is like uh, to do that. And yeah, again, this inspires you to go there. Another example is by Kelowna Farms. This is uh, just over the border in the US. And yeah, if you scan this, and you know what? I will scan it because I feel like it. Let's see if we can get this uh, going. So right now I'm gonna start up a live demo for everybody. There you see my phone right now. So let me just move the stuff. I hope you can see it. And I'll just do this one demo now because not everybody always can see this. So this is a very large uh, uh, brochure. And you can actually see how well um, yeah, we recognize things, even though it's not perfect. So what you can see is that they have a welcome uh, button. They have a couple of images which actually link to videos. Let me make some room here. So, and this is of course, of uh, what they are trying to share is that they really have some good yeah, farm to table experiences, meaning that you can see where the food comes from as well as uh, see how it's uh, made. And of course, enjoy that as well. And if I click it, the video starts. So this is as simple as it is and, and how it works. And with that, I want to show one more thing. And this is my Switzerland, which really has a nice, nice uh, uh, example. And I will scan this again. 
So my Switzerland, among other things, uh, yeah, does a live view of, of how it is the ski resort is uh, near the Matterhorn. So if I scan this, I can literally see the live webcam view. Whoa, we see right now that there's a snowstorm going on. But imagine you're reading a brochure about a destination and through this you can actually see how it is right now on, uh, in this case, in this ski resort. Let me just move it here on the right. Uh, and please don't look at my phone. You can see that yesterday it was amazing weather. Uh, and of course, yeah, that's when you want to go there. Oh, oh, I shouldn't click everything. Um, let me do one more demo because these, some of these you really need to see. And this one is also by my Switzerland, and because they have a 360 video. Oh, right there, you can see. And so you, again, you scan it. This is a, a part of a, a brochure that they send out to people. Oh, and you don't see it yet. Excuse myself. Let me. There we go. So I scanned it. Let me just scan it again so you get the whole experience. So here I tap the button, it opens up the experience. And right now I have a 360 view. This is actually just a simple web page they point to where you can have this experience on your mobile. I really think this is one of the best uh, executions we've ever seen in a travel and tourism uh, uh, example. And yeah, I've actually been to one of these places, if this is similar to it, a, a Cirque, and it is as impressive as it looks. Well, with that, let me stop the demo because also it is a little bit off sometimes. But I hope you get a feeling of how it works and how it feels like. My Switzerland really knows how to do it. Amazing visuals and an amazing experience, which helps people see like, you know what, this is an amazing place. I want to go there because that's, of course, one of the objectives that you want to do with, uh, by using Layer. Another uh, nice example is Trondheim in Norway, where almost every page has been enhanced in their city guide, uh, their promotional brochure. Uh, you can get a guide walk, a guided city walk, uh, and all kinds of useful information. And what I like here is that they really make it made it practical instead of just photos. Also, when you're there, you can easily use it to get those local experiences. Another example is uh, by Corridon. It's a um, yeah, they sell uh, vacation packages. Uh, you can see the print ad here on the left. And in the bottom, you can see scan this page and play the game. And here you see in the middle um, a screenshot of this game, which is a simple puzzle where you have to correct or, or yeah, make sure that the image is correct. And with that, you get a chance to win. And you have to do it in uh, as quick as you can and with the least moves as well and the winners will get a nice prize. So this is a great example of engaging your audience and converting them into uh, leads. One of our older customers actually is Lonely Planet. Lonely Planet uh, has uh, augmented their book covers now for a while. And basically what they do on top of their book covers is they make their covers, their books more current. So they link to their apps, They uh, uh, not just the phrase books or the guide apps, but also videos to really give it more of a, yeah, give a good insight on what it looks like, uh, photos of the city and all kinds of useful current information. So with, with augmented reality, Lonely Planet really goes beyond the book. So you can make brochures, you can make books, uh, you can make leaflets and ads and things like that. But of course, there's also uh, editorial content that newspapers, magazines create about your destination of which you, for instance, are a manager or that you are involved in. Well, what uh, Toronto Star did here is that they used an amazing video about New York where uh, you have a stunning time-lapse time video. So if you scan this article, you get this amazing video. So what's important here is that you always offer up the opportunity for anybody writing about your city, writing about your destination, your resort, your hotel, that you have the video material. And as well as if you are into augmented reality, are already using it, that they can use it as well. And this is a great example here by Toronto Star promoting basically 
New York City using augmented reality and going beyond the page and using video. So that was a short overview of uh, uh, the examples we have for tourism. We will have a demo available tomorrow at layer.com slash tourism, where we have uh, not just the stuff that you saw now, but also a specific demo that we created for you to experience so that you have a good idea about the things you can do. And to show you a little bit of the other things that our clients are doing, uh, here are some other layer examples. Well, like I said, a Men's Health uh, this last month uh, has used Layer in their shopping extra. So the front was Jimmy Fallon, and in the back he was uh, showing off some good uh, uh, styling, uh, styled materials to wear. And uh, basically all the pages were scannable, and you can buy, you can see it on the phone here in the middle, you can buy the shirt and the, the pocket square, uh, the watch, etc., etc., that people were wearing in the page. With with that, I really, I mean, the point of this demo is not just to see, say that, that this amazing brand is, is using augmented reality by layer, but also they are using it to do transactions, to inspire people from the desire that the magazine offers to inspire them to buy. And I think with travel also, this is a great, great thing to do. Another one that launched last month was Porter Magazine. Uh, people say it's, it's really challenging Vogue in what they do. Uh, and every every page here is shoppable. Porter is made by Netherporte, one of the largest style e-commerce sites. And uh, yeah, it's such a logical thing for them to do is that they combine style a style magazine with commerce. Seventeen does it a little bit different. Over two hundred and twenty pages is uh, are uh, enriched every other issue, where the kids, because of course these are teenagers, uh, can scan a page and add any product that they see to their wish list. So that they have a good pin board almost. I'm not saying Pinterest, but they can't pin it. A uh, pin board of all the products that are discussed because this is what they do with the magazine. The over 2.2 uh, million kids read this magazine. And yeah, amazing numbers that we see with this. And this, by the way, is done by our layer partner, Nelly Moser, over in New York. Another category that we uh, see a lot done with is brochures. On the left, you see a Canadian Walmart. Uh, for Black Friday using Layer to promote its deals and, and to help people buy more. Or here in the middle, you see an example of Halloween uh, materials that you can buy and people can see more stuff, videos and things like that on this brochure. And on the right, it's a furniture uh, store a prom yeah, a promoting its material, also using augmented reality to enhance the experience. Billboards. Uh, outside, it's always a challenge because you have to make sure that people have the opportunity to scan it. It's not just from the car, but they can walk around it like on a train station, have the time to see it like the one here on the, the Assassin's Creed. And then if they scan it, in this case, they would get a coupon of $5 off or 5 euros off if they would order that game online. Very, very smart way to do it. And I think for any city or any, any place that has posters, make sure that they are interactive because... The image probably is good, but the video might even be better. Or you want to just make sure that they can opt into your newsletter using your incredible, amazing materials. The last one here is cards. We also see a lot of cards here, not just business cards. You see a screenshot on the left here, but also Christmas cards uh, and even wedding invitations. And the cool thing with the wedding invitation was that after the wedding, they put all their a slideshow of their wedding pictures on top of the uh, on top of this experience. A very great way to make print interactive. So with that, I'd like to close off uh, the examples. I hope you liked it. Now let me just check in here before I go on if we have, uh, uh, or let me just take a moment uh, to check in here, but I hear there's no pressing questions right now. So uh, let me just go on here with the product walkthrough to show you what we use and how we do it. So uh, it starts first with the Layer app. The Layer app, uh, like I said before, downloaded uh, 38 times. It's free on Android and iOS. It works on phones and tablets. It shows 2D and 3D augmented reality. 2D is the easiest, what you can do with the Layer Creator. That is all the buttons, the videos, uh, the image slideshows that you can put on there. And 3D is a little bit more, more uh, uh, difficult to create or actually a lot more difficult, but you can do it as well. It does geo-based uh, augmented reality as well as interactive print. And we actually also read QR codes. 
And now we extend the lifetime of content with our pop-out mode. So once you scan something, you tap it once and it pops to the screen so you can take it away from the printed brochure. And also at a later moment in your history, you can review the video that you saw and therefore extend the content lifetime. If you want to create augmented reality using our tools, we have three flavors for you to choose from. You can either do it yourself as the layer creator. You can work with layer interactive print services. So you can basically use the experience that we have and, and hire us. Or you can work with a layer partner. Let's go through them. So first off, the layer creator. You see here a screenshot of that. Uh, this is where you yourself upload a PDF of your printed material, whatever that may be, as long as it's visually rich, because that's what the computer needs to recognize it. And in this case, you see on the left, you see the pages you have uploaded. In the middle, you see uh, the page you are editing right now. And on the right, you see all the buttons and media you can add on top of that printed page. And what you do basically is drag and drop it from the, le uh, from the right bar to the middle on top of your page, press save, press publish, and you're live. So this is drag and drop content creation. And like I said before, within a minute, you can have this done. You can have uh, several buttons on there, a video, even a slideshow if you have those images ready and waiting. It is that easy. And please uh, join our next webinars to see how easy that is. If you look at the types of buttons, basically anything <clears throat> that you uh, expect uh, in an online experience you can now do on top of uh, interact or on top of your print using layer so from simple website links to call now buttons you scan and you click to call this is great for restaurants but also for booking book now click and book now very easy also to buy go straight to your uh, shopping cart email us it sends an email to your email address that you have provided but you can even download an app. This is actually one of the things that uh, uh, Lonely Planet is using. In the media category, we have slideshows. Uh, together with videos, the most popular uh, used uh, uh, format on top of print. You can also listen to audio or even use a SoundCloud widget to do so. Social, of course, very important. Make sure that you use layer <coughs> so people can like us, tweet us, uh, uh, follow you, send you an email, or even pin you. And for the people that have premium accounts and also have the knowledge, they can use our advanced features for HTML, where they can render uh, internet code on top of that printed page, use JSON uh, to, to really go further, as well as uh, create a geo launcher or a, a launch another app. This is, like I said, a little bit advanced, not for today, but we can go into that another time. Every campaign has statistics. Here is an example of our statistics where you can see the total page views, the total interactions, and the total users. And when you select a specific page, you can actually see the specific page statistics of the five or three buttons that you have there, or video, or anything else. And the advanced user, so the premium account, also gets to download the CSV file so they can work this data into their own systems. Now, when you're producing, it's really important that you use the same yeah, drive that you probably use when creating the print. And that is that you need to make sure it's relevant. Make sure that whatever you offer on top of your printed product is relevant to your audience, that they want to see it. And it's not just an afterthought just for, for the sake of the technology. For instance, if you can, use something exclusive. <clears throat> for instance, if you did a photo shoot, use the behind the scenes information. Or if you have the, the concept where this fits, make something interactive. If you have, for instance, a game like you saw in the Claridon example, make sure that people uh, yeah, can play that game and maybe even can win something. Also, a very, if you can, try to be entertaining. So people want to learn more, see more. So yeah, have them do something extra. Actually, a great way to do this is uh, to do a simple poll so people are engaged as well. And the last, and actually it is the most simple one, is to be informative. So if you talk about, for instance, the weather, link to the current weather. If you talk about a specific city or location, <laughs> link to that website, which should, of course, be mobile uh, in a mobile format. 
So when you create augmented reality with layer, please make sure that you think what is best for your audience, because it's not just that you build it and it goes by itself. No, you have to entice them and really work for it. And that brings me to the second thing about campaigns. So it is important to tell them about it. So if you don't tell on top of your printed uh, materials that there is a digital, um, digital experience, then they will not see this and they will not go, go and pull out their phone and scan this page. On the left here, we have a Sochi special that, we, uh, that somebody made for a newspaper. They actually have two call to actions. One that really is, uh, yeah, both are really visually clear. You can't really see the small text, but also explains why you should pull out their phone, see, uh, pull out your phone to see the, uh, yeah, I don't know what the reasoning is because I can't really see it myself. And on the bottom, it says this is an interactive special and you can save it. So you can use it during the whole Olympic game where uh, there are two weeks. So if you want usage of your interactive print, make sure you use visual activation. If you don't use a call to action, you will get no usage. That's how simple it is. We once had a project where after four issues uh, of a magazine, uh, where in the first 10 pages, uh, they always had a full page activation. So this is how it works. This is why you should do it. That really was nicely done in a visual, large visual, full page visual. And the fifth uh, issue, I think it was, they halved that page. So they halved visually the, the activation and puts, uh, I think, an ad next to it. Well, what happened with the, the interactive print usage, that halved as well. So that is how closely tied it is to the uh, act, visual activation. So make sure you do it. It doesn't happen by itself. And with this, I mean, it, remember when you had your first website, you had to tell your audience that you had one to drive that usage. This is the same thing. So augmented reality with the layer creator, anybody can do, and it's do it yourself. And if you want, and if you need to, we have an amazing help center where all the users, all the questions that the users have had over the years, we have accumulated, collected, worked out, and you can find basically anything that you wonder and have a question about uh, concerning the layer creator, as well as anything around it, like the layer app. So, of course, you can call us, uh, but we're not set up for that. We have the Layer Help Center that can help you and can answer any question you had. On the bottom, you can, for instance, see uh, that we have tutorials. We have work on best practices and tips uh, where you just saw a little slide about already. This is the place to go. Uh, on every page, you can see the support section. Just click on it. It'll bring you to this page and uh, we'll probably will answer your uh, question. And if you, of course, can't wait, you can ask your question in a moment. And otherwise, tomorrow at the uh, questions and answers section, session. So let's talk about pricing. <clears throat> if you want, you can use a layer for free. So the basic pages starts at $0 a page, zero, zero, zero pounds. The content then is live only for 60 days, and there will be an ad under it. So this is, uh, yeah, this is what most people use to start with, just to get a feel for it, to, to practice, if you will. For the more serious people, the professionals, we have the pro pages. And this is really where uh, you, you pay, of course, but you get your content is live for one year. You don't get ads and you get good statistics. The basic pages do not have statistics. The price here is $60 per page. Um, or you can save with bundles. So the more you buy, the less you pay. Uh, for Euro, it's 45 euros a page. A page. And like I said, if you buy more, you will um, pay less. The premium account uh, is something where if you are a magazine or, uh, or more of a developer and you really want to go advanced, you have a lot of usage. This you can then use. It's $4,000 a year. Uh, one of the cool things that your content is live for the duration of your premium account you can have downloadable uh, statistics as well as advanced features like the HTML widget, also the custom button so that you can use your own custom button design. You get campaign collaboration. So if you're a large publisher or a large company and you have several campaigns where you want to work together on, you can do so. <coughs> you get dedicated online support. So you get a dedicated person always ready uh, for you to, to, to help you and who knows about your campaigns as well as uh, included online training. So this is our pricing. It starts from, like, uh, like you saw, for nothing to $60 a page. And if you really are ready, you'll also get the premium account.
Now, you can also do, every, uh, like, like you saw, you can do everything yourself for the pricing before, or you can have Layer create your campaign. Um, the Layer Interactive Print Services is based on all these campaigns that we have seen uh, go before. Over, over 50,000 campaigns have been, yeah, we've seen or more. <coughs> and basically, we help you with the ideation and planning of your campaign. What do you need? Why do you need it? And we come up with what kind of extra augmented content we, we can uh, yeah, create to help you reach your objective. We, of course, take care of the production, make sure all the images, the videos, and everything else is working perfectly at launch. And then when it's running, or uh, if it, uh, we will make, review it regularly, analyze the statistics, and make sure that it really yeah, is uh, uh, up to par with what you want. And if not, we can change it because it's always a learning experience. So for Layer, you can hire us for your services. Please contact sales at layer.com so you get this. Another way to use Layer, and this is the last one, is to use one of the Layer partners. If you go to layer.com slash partners, you can find one of our 60 local Layer partners. These are agencies, all kinds of companies that uh, are ready there for you, that are specialized. They're selected by us. Uh, they're specialized in augmented reality and Layer. And can help you in your local time zone. So these are the three flavors that you can use to create augmented reality with Layer. Either do it yourself, use our services, or use the services of a Layer partner. And with that, we are running really nicely in time here. I'm ready for questions and answers. Um, okay, then uh, let's start with Renee having a question regarding more examples. Um, so she would like to know where she can find examples of using layer for product training material. Um, well, we have two uh, places on the web where you can see more examples of uh, layer. First off, there's the inspiration section on the website uh, where you can see all kinds of uh, examples, as well as we have an even larger uh, set of examples on Pinterest. So if you go to pinterest.com slash layer, this is where you can see all kinds of examples uh, that we have found and continuously collect about how layer is being used by all these uh, publishers, these 74,000 people that use the layer creator. Okay, so uh, that kind of uh, answers Herman's question regarding um, examples about geo-based campaigns, but maybe we want to explain to him how he can find geo-layers. So, yeah, geo-layers is uh, something you can do with augmented rea uh, with layers augmented reality services. Um, today, we really focused on interactive print because that is where we see the most usage. So, we have not collected any act, uh, list of, of uh, geo examples right now, but we have a good, if you go to the layer documentation in the help center or in the support center, you can see how this is made. And this is yeah pretty easy. So that is the best place to look up more information on how you can create such experiences. Um, okay. Um, Robin has a question. Um, what do you think about the idea of making your brochure fully visual using photos only and using layer to specify your products with product information, etc.? Do you think enough people use layer or will use layer if they see it? When do you uh, when do something uh, that drastic like that? Well, I really like that idea, uh, Robin. So. Your idea is that the whole brochure is one big visual or every page is just a visual. And if you want to see a slideshow or if you want to call to book or see specific pricing information, you scan it with your phone. I think that would be amazing to do. But I am afraid that not everybody has a smartphone and not everybody's willing to use Layer to do it. So as much as I love it because, hey, I would do it. I don't think everybody would. And of course, I would. I take it you are a business and you have to make sure that everybody's appealed by your activities and your marketing. I would recommend to also put a printed or, or something in print, what else you can do, not just the visuals, unless that is, of course, your campaign. If this is the concept and this is also how you, for instance, get your PR, I think that definitely would work. So it is, if you want to really be practical, 
I don't know if you should do it. If you really want to get the local PR and say, this is how now we do our brochure. It's all visual. I, I, I'm for sure that you will get lots of write-ups on that. So um, exciting. Great idea. Thank you. Uh, so Michael had a question uh, regarding a campaign um, expiration date. Uh, if the campaign is live or it's the page. That, uh, right. So is a campaign live for a year or is it just the page? Actually, a campaign is nothing but a collection of pages. So once you have published uh, that collection of pages, being uh, it's one page or 100 pages, that wouldn't matter. From the moment, moment you press published, this will be live for one year if you use the pro version. It will be longer if you also have a premium account subscription. And it'll be 60 days if you publish it using the free option. So it doesn't matter if it's or a page is always part of a campaign. So a campaign is always live for that duration. So uh, Michael, uh, just to clarify, even if you create a campaign and then later on you add some pages, um they will expire the same as the campaign we won't keep a few pages live um so joe is asking um what do you think the effect will be on the need for the layer app and use of layer creator when google and apple integrate augmented reality software into their devices as a standard issue i so think I on one hand that would be great uh, it's a very logical thought, and I've had it a lot myself. We actually are pre-installed on most Samsung devices uh, where people get the Layer app included in the, the, in the device they, they buy. This has been the case for almost four years, and, and we see a lot of uh, traffic because of it. But also, if you look at uh, mobile, the mobile industry in general, I mean, look at WhatsApp. Uh, that just got bought for, what was it, a couple billion dollars by Facebook. This is a service, just like SMS or iOS uh, or iMessaging, which is totally different than the native experience that people have to download to use. So it's not always the logical path for, for to, to grow your usage. And with augmented reality, one of the key things, it's based on the context. So if you're just standing in the middle of the street and you pull that layer, you probably will not have a usage for it because you need that visual. Either the brochure, your post, or a business card can tell you use layer to see the video or to see the special game that you can play on top of this card. So also there, it's really different how this is uh, experienced. And I, personally, I think that's also one of the exciting things because this really makes it relevant because once they do it, that's that magic moment that, that brings people in awe. And once you have created that, you've hooked them. And that is when you yeah, get them to, to book your ticket, a ticket to your destination or whatever it is that you are tending to do. So that is the exciting thing. And I think it may help if it's pre-installed. But of course, Apple is very fickle with these things. Android, in their own ways, doing it, is also different. So I think for Layer, uh, we're really happy with the Samsung pre-install deal. But overall, it's about getting as many publishers as we can to, to, to start using this. This is, of course, also why we work with a lot with the large magazines. They tell people or they teach people that scanning is a good experience. And from there, it'll be something that everybody expects to do in the future. Um, so Dwayne has a nice question regarding premium accounts. Uh, is the HTML widget 3D content and geo layers available for premium account holders only? Okay, well, that, a very good question. So the HTML widget in the uh, uh, is indeed only available in the uh, premium account uh, uh, holder uh, environment. So that's what you get. If you want to do a geo layer, and what was the other one? Um, 3D. 3D, yes. So that is actually also the same. For that, if you want to create such content, you use the layer platform. That is where you need to program uh, this experience and be able to do such advanced uh, uh, yeah, uh, things. Uh, so, And that actually is free. So that experience in itself is free. If you want to use a visual to activate 3D or Geo, then you do need to use uh, uh, the premium account. But in itself, you can just create 3D experiences as well as geo experiences using the free layer platform. So that is at no cost. It's just that you, when you use the layer creator, you will need a premium account to add such buttons. Thank you, Martin. 
so let's move uh, to Pablo's question. Uh, these tourist demos are amazing. Thank you, Pablo. Uh, all of them are built in the creator or are layers? All of these are layer creator-based experiences, and they're actually not demos. They're actual experiences that we have found in our platform. So they are actually live, and people are using it as such. Um, okay, so um, let's move to Joe's questions. How will developers upload content in Layer Creator if Apple and Google don't use Layer as the standard issue software? Uh, <laughs> so back to what uh, the previous question is. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Well, again, Joe, I think this is a great point. But again, look at, for instance, WhatsApp or Instagram or all these other standard feature type applications that have evolved outside of these humongous ecosystems by Google and, uh, and, uh, and Apple. So I don't think uh, this is a have to, of course it would be nice, but that would be a whole different world if everything had to go through them. I think if you look at our numbers with 38 million um, and the, the 74,000 uh, publishers out there using our services, we're doing pretty good. And uh, we actually know uh, both parties pretty well, so we're also always in good contact. So I th I don't think it's a necessity. We're doing great without them. And uh, yeah, thank you for your question. So Rene has another uh, nice question for you, Martin. Uh, do you have any documented case studies to reference with statistics showing the value of bringing layer into marketing campaigns? Something to help sell the idea of using the layer technology to existing clients? Yes, good question. Uh, we actually on our website have several cases in several industries which you can download uh, to uh, that show how it's done and also what the results are. So please go to our website uh, and, and, and find the cases there. Um, let's move to Maria's uh, question. If an institution such as a university or college wants to design a marketing strategy using layer with different possibilities, video, audio, webcam links, etc., in different supports, cards, big panels, uh, and others, which payment form has to use? Is this an old strategy uh, a unique campaign or has to pay at different campaigns for each layer possibility? Hmm, I don't think I understand uh, Maria's question exactly, but let me start <clears throat> by trying to interpret it. And so an institution, educational uh, institutions are one of the categories of users or layer creator users that can apply for sponsored credits. That's, uh, you can find that on our pricing page. So, and that means that you do not have to pay it. It won't be for all your credits. So if you need a thousand, you probably won't get all of those, but uh, you can definitely ask for or, or see if you can, uh, or yeah, pitch for it to, to get some sponsored credits. For the rest, um, if you, you talk about the paid for uh, layer uh, part, well, of course, there's always a standard free publishing option for 90, where, where it's live for 90 days. You don't really get statistics and the professional one you can always use whenever you want. That's all up to you. Uh, like I said, it's live for a year. And if you need the extra features like HTML and custom buttons, that's when you do the premium account. And yeah, there's no real difference in there. And like I said before, if you want to program a geo layer and also include 3D experience in there, that is at no cost because that is not done using the layer creator, but the layer platform. But that is a whole other ballgame which we purposefully didn't really cover because we see most usage right now in the layer creator, which is, I think, also the best opportunity for everybody out there. Uh, so let's move to Khan. Uh, he would like to clarify something. Um, in yesterday's partners webinar, it was discussed that layer is, no, uh, is not pre-installed on Samsung anymore. Can we clarify? My clients ask this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is good. Uh, I, I guess layer is getting so large that sometimes on the left side we don't hear or know what we're saying on the right side. Uh, I can tell you that uh, the contract uh, that we have with this company, uh, with Samsung, is still live. They determine themselves when, an, uh, when a phone has, uh, can load layer or has layer preloaded. And then the process is that in each country where each operator buys these phones, they uh, can then select which software they want pre-installed. So actually, we aren't really actively informed about this. 
we just see it in our statistics. So this goes. No, but um, only a Galaxy S devices had this uh, agreement. So I'm not sure if these kind of yeah. um, devices are are on the market anymore. But yeah, there are users using it. But... Okay. Yeah. Well. We're getting some live information here from our product manager, and he says that indeed it's currently it's not on every device. We currently are not seeing any activity, so we and we also not actively pursuing. So, uh, my recommendation is that we have an enlarged installed base due to the uh, uh, the old de uh, pre-installed deal, but currently this is not actively used by by Samsung. I think that's the safest bet for now. Okay, we're getting quite a few questions here. Hopefully, we will make it before uh, the end. But if not, please visit our help center and try to find or uh, post your questions there. Or so, go to our question and answer session tomorrow, yeah, same time. Exactly. Um, so, um, about the deck, uh, we will. Yeah, so if people ask are asking if we can if they can get the deck tomorrow at layer.com slash tourism and you will get an email about this if you registered. Uh, you can download the deck as well as the demo, as well as the audio of this session, anything you need to get going and that we provided today. Um let's see what else we can um Adrian is asking, uh, are there any limits to what can be recorded as a trigger? Okay, so Recorded as a trigger, I interpret it. So, what can you use to to uh, what can you use layer with? So, make sure that your visual is flat, meaning uh, it doesn't you know it isn't like a computer or a bottle or a phone itself even, but it's a flat surface. This is why we we focus on print and that it is visually rich, so that you can actually uh, the computer can distinguish it from other things. So, if it's a flat surface but it's all white, well, then there is nothing for it to recognize. So then it won't work. And visually rich means use a photo or anything else that is unique. And also maybe uh, it works with your concept and your experience. That is what is needed so that we can recognize and then later also add the extra content that you've put on top of it. Okay, let's move to Pablo. Um, why the new feature policy for common and premium account in the layer creator button? Oh, that's a very good question. Well, we did this because we saw different types of usage on our platform. It really got, uh, we, we, we also had a lot of feedback on our pricing in the old days. So we updated this to ensure that we can, yeah, we can keep up with our feature development. And we chose this structure that the, the hardcore professionals, <laughs> if I may call the premium accounts, that really get what they needed. And yet the professionals get also what they needed. So we made this division uh, and introduced this in January. And actually, it's working out pretty well. Uh, people are really happy with it, uh, with the clarity. And uh, yeah, they get their money's worth. And it really now fits the value of the experience, which is also one of the types of feedback that we got. Um, I have uh, Robin here asking something nice, I think, for you, Martin. Um, I'm indeed working as a marketeer for a company in water sports. How about implementing only a layer logo in uh, your product themselves? For instance, a clothing, uh, clothing tag, including how to use your product, how to use instead of writing it in the tag. Uh, practic practically, do you think forcing people to uh, into using layer and therefore building an innovative image for your brands is worth more than the people you lose them that have no clue what to do? <laughs> ah, I love for Robin. Great question here. Um, so two things about this question or idea, I'd say. So first off, if you have a label and uh, that label is the same in every t-shirt, any sweater, any jacket, or whatever this brand has, it won't be unique to it. So you won't have a unique you know, saying like, this sweater was designed by Martin, and you have to wash it at 30 degrees. It, it will be, the, yeah, it'll link to the same experience every time. So I don't know if you can do that. Uh, you'll have to have a unique visual for each t-shirt that people can scan which personally I don't think is a bad idea, but it is something that you need to keep in mind in, in your production. Um, on the other hand, uh, or uh, the other thing with this question is, so should you force people to do something? Well, that in itself I think is a wrong thing. You should never force things to, uh, to people. 
but this is indeed a great way to yeah position yourself your brand as innovative and really make it stand out from the competition so in that sense i really think it is worth uh doing so my i my recommendation here was would, would be to combine it use the practical um, uh, information on the label like how to watch you know when or what degree etc cetera, etc cetera. keep that on there but provide a unique experience on that label uh, and make sure by the way it's large enough to be scanned so it has to be kind of like the business card size make sure it's a unique visual but with that, you, for instance, can have a great video of you, if you are the founder, why you founded this company. Then you can show around like where the, the fabric comes from, what it's, yeah, how it's produced, how the distribution channel is done. And people want to know this if they are a fan of the brand. And through it also, you can add order more or subscribe to the newsletter so you can fill your database and, and fill your funnel that way. So I think it's a great idea, some nuances, but great idea. Don't force them, but, but see if you can find a middle ground because we're not there yet that everybody scans all the time, but we will get there one day. Okay, so I think the last question, uh, question for today will be from Tolga. Um, is it possible to create outdoor markets just using the visuals, like people can buy something and want it to deliver it? Uh, their homes in bus stations, for example, with layer like QR codes using in Korean metro station. Yeah, uh, actually, yeah, I love that Korean demo. Um, this is, is, yeah, I would almost say a standard usage of layer. We've seen we with here in Holland, for instance, CBS Outdoor, one of the larger, uh, 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 yeah, owners of, of, of the market uh, of, of uh, billboards, has been using layer for a while. We saw good traffic on some of them. Like I said before, make sure that, you know, it's not the one uh, next to the freeway where you're in your car because then it won't work. But in general, I think it's a great way to follow up from a billboard to the phone, to the person, so they can either get a coupon, get an opt-in, anything. And as long as it's fitting to the experience and that it is worth their while, people will do it. So, yes, we have examples. Please go to layer.com. Uh, sorry, Pinterest.com slash layer if you want to see more. And uh, that would, yeah, you will see some nice things there, like like you saw in, in the, the one I showed you with the, uh, the computer game. That really worked well. So it's a great idea. Please do so. Well, with that, we are one minute over time. I'd like to thank everybody for taking an hour out to listen to us. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we enjoyed uh, answering your questions. And... Um, I'm sorry we can't answer anything right now more because we also have to go here. Tomorrow we have a one hour question and answer session. So if you have any more questions, please uh, dial in there, uh, layer.com slash events to sign up. And uh, uh, yeah, I'd love to see you there. Thank you very much.